And welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. I'm so happy to be here. This is Global Connections. I'm going to talk about the chat GBT and how it is going viral. How will it change the world with Rupmati Kandakar? Rupmati, welcome to the show, Rupmati. It's so nice to have you here. Uh, Hello, Ajay. <laughs> Always my pleasure to be with you on the show. And today we are really talking technical and talking about chat GPT. What's all the fuss about, isn't it? So let's go, Jay. <laughs> let's go. There's so much to talk about. We'll never finish on time. Never, never, never. So we you know, <laughs> how, how does this work? You know, Because at the end of the day, it's technology. It's software. It's a database. Mm -hmm. And somebody has to program it. It doesn't by, happen by accident. It doesn't come down from space. It's right here among us. Um, so um, I, I don't think people realize that there's a human being at the other end of the programming, right? Correct. The amazing show that you had two days back, where you explained the technical points of chat GPT, um, they were like a good foundation which we had, isn't it? Now, the point that you made was, what are the values that you put into this technology? That What is the input that you get the output? Who influences what is coming out? Who influences the language of the program? So these are very, very ethical questions that we have to ask in technology, Jay. And uh, that's what makes technology feasible for humankind. If you have a rogue technology, a lot of things are going to go wrong because technology can be used both ways. Uh, for rogue purposes and for uh, uh, you know progressive purposes. So when you have this technology, like you mentioned, uh, playing uh, the Trump card in the Trump elections, so we don't want something like that. We don't want a disruptive uh, technology. We want something which helps us to uh, add on to our database, add on to our knowledge, give us knowledge at a faster pace. You know, this is a natural language processing model, but uh, how much can it interact with users depends on the values put into it. So that's what we have to be careful about. So because, like you mentioned, this uh, chat uh, box, as you call it, is not connected to the internet. It is still in the programming stage. It is. It has data only up to 2021. So we are still in the uh, lab stage, but the Final product should be conducive to humanity. So, and now we have artificial intelligence, which is just on a rise with every company that you find panicking, even Google saying they, they might have to shut down in two years because their search uh, engine might uh, close down because of ch uh, chat GPT. So you have them coming up with their own versions. Now, what you choose is uh, your, own, uh, your own perception of it like Firefox, Microsoft, what do you choose? It depends upon you, your needs, your, your, uh, your output data, everything, you know? So choice is yours, but technology has to be good. That's you the know, point. Until this, <clears throat> until this came out, you know, uh, I was doing fine. <laughs> I was doing fine. I would search too, for something too. on Google. I would get my answer. Uh, yeah. I, 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 you know, I would go on my my Amazon uh, um, my Amazon box Alexa, and uh, I would I would get my answer. Um, so, is this really necessary for the human condition, or is it you know too much? <laughs> they say that we are on the right side of uh, the development, and we are seeing an exponential uh, technological advancement uh, in all fields. So, Jay, if you say we are in that age, which is equivalent to the 1900s. When 1900s, we had uh, three huge things coming, telephone, automobile, you know, and uh, electricity. These were the, you know, mm, they uh, bamboozled the entire system. So now we have five innovation platforms. We have robotics, we have uh, genome sequencing, we have storage, we have uh, artificial intelligence, and we have blockchain technology. These five innovation platforms are the ones which are going to shape our modern world. So uh, artificial intelligence is one part of that innovation platform. We are talking of one dot 
chat GPT is one dot in artificial intelligence, robotic, genome sequencing. These are going to uh, uh, rock the world. Here. I can give you an example of this. You know, we have these uh, autonomous uh, uh, taxi services where, you know, you have a convergence of three platforms. You have the robotics, which is a vehicle. You have the artificial intelligence, which books your cab, which gets you the cab, which talks to you, which asks you your destination. And you have the energy storage, which is the vehicle itself. So you see these innovation platforms are not single and not moving in one direction. You have convergence of these S curves and they are feeding off each other. So it's like um, a sci-fi movie. <laughs> we don't know where this, uh, where this is going to go. And uh, Jay, um, this, for example, this autonomous vehicle is just accounting for seven to eight trillion dollars. Uh, it cut it by 2030. Right now it's negligible, but by 2030, it's going to be eight trillion dollars. And these five total innovative platforms, if you say, if anybody's interested in the equity market, in the share market, uh, these five platforms account for. Uh, seven to eight trillion, that is around 10% of the share market globally. But, but say uh, it's going to go up to $210 trillion. Oh. <laughs> so can you imagine the, uh, the leap that is going to take? And this is a conservative uh, figure or estimate that they're taking out because we are not taking in um, the um, artificial intelligence innovations. We are still talking at a conservative level. But if more come out, something this is going to just blow up. So imagine equity market like this. Now, Jay, see this. Equity market is promising you a 210 trillion. But so many jobs are going every day. Because going, of technology. Going away. You mean going away? Yeah, going away. People are losing jobs because of technology. If yeah. you have one bot which does the job of 100 people, you will lay them off. Why will you pay for this? So it's such a balancing a game also going on. It brings in money in the equity market, but it lays off jobs. So economy is going to be uh, affected by chat GPT, yeah. uh, by innovation platforms. Where, where did this I see the number that uh, something over 50% of the jobs in um, the global economy uh, can be retired? because yes. of chat gpt it will it will do their work for them um yes. and it's really really interesting you know uh it's going global right we know that that's why we're having this discussion it's everywhere um Ooh. and it's going to be everywhere and and you know the the disruptive quality of this technology means yes. that those who adopt it are on one side of the disparity line and those who don't are on the other side and the disparity line is huge. And that, that means in terms of countries and communities and individuals and businesses, of course. So if I, and I can see clearly that if I adopt this, um, I'll be ahead of my competitor who doesn't. If I use this in my, you know, my national economy or whatever national initiative I have, I'll be ahead of other countries. I'll be better off. So I'd better... Get about it. I'd better start right now because it's moving so fast. You agree? I agree, Jay. But all this technology is possible only when you have access to the internet, when you have access to computers, when you have access. There are still countries in the world which do not have access to basic telephone lines. So how much are you going to sell this to them? and outsourcing which takes place, you know, you have countries which have outsourcing which is done. And if these innovation platforms take over that, you know, uh, the joblessness leads to a direct uh, effect, effect on the GDP of a country. GDP of a country affects the uh, global uh, uh, market. You know, it spirals into a different situation. We are in an interconnected uh, world. So, you know, when you see these things uh, playing, uh, the disparity that we are seeing, it will be more acute. The haves will have more haves and the have-nots will have 
nothing left to them. Because see now, uh, uh, chat GPT in its innovative research stage garnered around a million followers in one week or something like that. That was the figure that was given. So uh, the kind of response that people give is phenomenal. And when you see that uh, this technology has no barrier or no limitation to the extent that it reaches people, we understand that uh, no industry can be immune to this. We can use it to anything. And responsive, Jay, how, how responsive is the technology? You have had an interaction with it. How did you feel about that? Yeah, I went, I, I went as with millions, tens of millions of others, all in the past yeah. couple of weeks, and everybody jumping on this thing um, to yes. have a, a, trial, a trial copy. And I have it mm -hmm. on my machine, and I can go and ask it questions all day and all night. And, and I have learned that whatever question I can think of, it will answer. And whatever right. area of, um, you know, of, of inquiry I can think of, it will have more. So for example, mm. uh, I asked it to write a poem, and it did. I asked it whether I should buy a new chair, and it did. And then I asked it, are there any considerations about not buying a new chair? And it came up with the negative on buying a new chair. What I mean oh. is it can argue both sides, all sides of a given yeah. proposition. This sounds right. like lawyers in court, doesn't it? You know, you yes. have one, one lawyer is using it to say, I advanced this idea. Another one is saying, I oppose this idea. And then, you know, you can give um, what I call it, open AI. You can give that to the judge. You don't yes. need a judge. You don't need a judge anymore. But I, the judge <laughs> evaluates both lawyers' briefs, and mm -hmm. it makes a decision. So yes. this changes our world. The the problem is right now it's kind of in chaos. What I mean, I, I would like to talk to you about that. There mm. are some. If you go and you go on your phone, go on your phone and go look at the Play Store on your phone, um, and ask it about what kinds of programs there are that will give you chat GBT. Okay, it'll come up with dozens, do many dozens. Okay. It's not just okay. one program. And, and, and then of course, some programs are better than other programs. They're competing. Okay. Uh, you you yeah. mentioned that, uh, I think the primary one, the one that I'm on, which is uh, openai.com, um, <clears throat> does not have information after 2021. And that's because it's a test. But Microsoft Bing, you know, the, the search engine Bing, is supposed to be folding in current events right till today into yes. its database on an automated basis. So your answer is going to have the latest and greatest on everything according to the news that's being reported. This will give, you know, Bing a tremendous advantage. And then they'll all be following that, won't they? I mean, the competition is clear. The competition is growing. Competition is global. Correct, Jay. Now we have uh, Character and Claude coming up. This is Chat GPT we are discussing. Character and Claude are going to come up. Uh, but Jay, still now, till now, this chat box knows how to please the master. If you say, no, I feel the answer is this, it will say, I apologize. And I think the you may be right. You know, we wait for the point when the chat box will say, no, I think I am right. If you say, no, my house is this way. And if the chat box starts saying, no, I think you should be going this way, we are in trouble, Jay. So that kind, who will control them? Humans, you can control through jails, through judicial processes. How can you control technology? How can well, you control technology? There was a little story about a, some young 22-year-old who had invented uh, a program to identify when the text was being written by a chat box. Now, this oh. is very interesting because, you know, you know you're know, you an academician. Um, yes. The professor is always going to ask for you to write something up. The business right. community, your boss and at work is always going to, you have to be able to write things up. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here to tell you that you could go on chat uh, GBT and you can say, write me a story about um, the border dispute between India and what, China. Okay. And you in will Shakespearean immediately... language. In Shakespeare's <laughs> language, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll do that. Yeah. And so if I'm a student, uh, how could I not? You know, so I, I go and I and I know some uh, professors who believe that they have all already received written work yeah. that was written by a bot. <laughs> anyway, so um, the the counter the countervailing proposition is that there are bots that can identify the other bots, um, right. and likewise. And this this came up in that show I was telling you about called uh, the Global Debate, which is actually interestingly enough an Indian program emanating from India, um, where they had a bunch of uh, you know scientists and technology people in various countries. And they're talking about the technology behind that WPT, WG, W, GPT, W, yeah. GPT, yeah. and uh, there there are programs that will identify when the bot is giving you misinformation. Okay, so now it's getting to be a little chaotic, isn't it? Correct, correct, Jay. Uh, I mean, uh, what you talk about that, you know, um, when the bot starts telling you that it's going to give you misinformation or this is wrong, this is falsely implied. When we see the possibilities that we can have with this uh, box in essay writing, in you know, it's particularly good for engineers where they can develop a full scale model of the building that the structure that they want to build. So uh, that is one uh, advantage that this one has so designing. The designers might go out of job you know, a site engineer can just pick up and uh, uh, build the uh, site. So you see how much the chat box will develop. This is model 3.5. There's a new model coming in, which is uh, uh, chat, uh, chat GPT-5, okay? That is close to the human brain. But Jay, I feel, you know, it's such a miracle that our brain is functions so well to uh, process and to feel so much technology, so much innovation, but still this chat box does not feel as yet. Uh, we should appreciate uh, the human machine more, I feel, you know, uh, the, uh, the machine innovation technology that we put in still does not have feelings, still does not have uh, the mind of its own. It is programmed to work under human supervision. But uh, um, you see uh, what it output it gives is very um, vague in the sense that uh, we don't know where it can be, uh, uh, what do you say, manipulated. Like we go back to the first point that we made, it can go to suit or influence uh, a person's thinking, inclination. You know, there was some game which was going on on that, uh, that uh, video game. And it was a simulation game, and it played on the minds of the people, uh, the gamers so much, it had a negative effect, psychological effect. So, I mean, you get dependent on this technology. And once you start yeah. getting dependent on this technology, it becomes difficult to live a sane life. It begins I, to own you. It begins to, yes. to run yes. you. Yes. You know, a couple of things come out of your comments that are very provocative. I mean. It sounds like uh, it sounds like that we we are not far from uh, machines that are self aware, that that have a consciousness. Okay? Right. And is there a rule in the book? You know, our brains, uh, which are really well designed compared, uh, our brains are only electronic machines at the end of the day, and no. and we, we we have consciousness. You can enter religion and all that, but it, consciousness can be quantified. Consciousness mm. can be, this is my view, uh, can be created or something close mm. to it. And, mm. and, and people want this. They want to see how far we can go. Every technology person, every programmer wants to push the barrier here. They want to push yeah. the cutting edge, and they're going to be looking for that. And maybe in our lifetimes, maybe soon, we can reach machines that are almost conscious, almost have yeah. self-awareness. They're, of yes. course, they're programmed, but they can program themselves, and they can appreciate, you know, how smart they are, what they know, what they don't know, who's asking. I mean, why not? This, this is, you know, technology. It's electronics. It, I, I believe it can be done. It will be done in, in incrementally over the next uh, few years. The scary part is, I can say, 
what couch should I buy or should I buy a chair? All that. Yeah. Now get some reasonable advice. I can also right. say, um, I can also say, how exactly do I conquer the world? Um, you know, <laughs> Vladimir Putin has this this too. You you ask this program any question and it will mm. give you a very knowledgeable answer. So he puts <laughs> in, how do I conquer the world? How do I beat the Ukrainians? And he will get an answer, a very sophisticated answer. This is very troublesome, isn't it? I, it's, it's in, in, it, if you bring it in politics, I think the chat box will just keep quiet and say, I think it's a mad world. I, I don't want to go into that place. <laughs> <laughs> the maniacs that we see in the political world are just uh, too much even for the chat box to handle. But... You have to program the chat box not I to handle know. that. You have to say, we, you know, you can't can't answer that question and you don't want to go there. But as I mentioned, this is very competitive. It's open source in a sense. Yes. And I can program it to not deal with politics, not deal with taking, you know, taking over the world um, or not. I can I can take those guardrails off just as easily. And so my competitive chat box is something that Vladimir Putin can use. Um, and so, where, you know, where, where does this end? And it's not just that it can write text for you. It can have a conversation. It, it can yes. have a conversation with a live person in spoken language, any language in the world. It can draw. It can design. It can create art. I can say, show me how to build a 20-story hospital with all the gear in it. And it will do that, and it will give me instructions on what I must do first to build my hospital. The, the power of this is, is incredible. Uh, and, and as we go forward, we're going to see it play out more and more. The motivation that these innovators have in creating these devices and these platforms, Jay, is phenomenal. Because you see what Ellen Musk did with the Starlink satellites. Today, Ukraine is surviving on that internet access. Uh, you know, even a chat uh, GPT has Elon Musk as an investor. So, oh, you know, they think out of the box into the future, and we 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 are we are able to visualize. Uh, they are like uh, looking into space. You know, there is no limit to what they think about. They don't keep boundaries. We may think that you know maybe it should stop you or maybe it should not go ahead, but they think beyond this. Well, like, for example, let me go out of the topic. Avatar 2, James Cameron took seven years to just create a camera so that he could have his visualization come on the big screen. So when you have that kind of motivation and when you have that kind of outlook, you can create. So people who have come to this chat box, uh, GPT, uh, uh, or uh, artificial intelligence as a whole, chat GPT is a small part of it, but artificial intelligence as a whole when it asks you what you want to order and what would you, it suggests to you what it would uh, feel suits your palate. I mean, uh, that is something uh, like they are, uh, like, like you said, they're like psychologists to us. Psychiatrists, they, they think for us. They influence our thinking. So this kind of technology, when it goes, uh, it is mutually symbiotic. It is going to make the world a better place. Hope so. You know, I mean, for example, I could say, what color tie should I wear today? Or what should I have for lunch? And yes. <laughs> where should I, <laughs> what movie should I see? You know, I mean, I could ask it to guide me in my daily life. It would be my, my best buddy. And I would, I would not need other people. I mean, I'll always talk somebody, to you, Rupmati. Somebody asked. <laughs> <laughs> so the question, somebody Go ahead. <laughs> Somebody asked Chatbox GPT four plus four is seven. My wife says so. She said no, it's it's eight. But maybe if your wife says it, your wife is always right. So <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of that much of an adjustment. So uh, it's amazing to see uh, what can be done with it. <laughs> well, different people are going to have different uh, approaches. You know, it's like social media. You know, you yes. have to be smart about using it. Uh, you can't ask yes. it a question that that you know that that it's not going to be able to give you a good answer on, and you have to appreciate its answer. It, it may have the, the reservation, you know. You, if your wife says it's seven, it's seven. You know that's pretty smart. You know, 
<laughs> Life is always right. <laughs> you know, I was I was in um, where was I in Australia at a, yeah. at a museum, and yeah. um, and I gave the uh, the lady a bill of fairly hmm. money, and she gave me change, and the change dropped all over the floor. It was oh. her fault. It was her hmm. fault. It dropped hmm. all over the floor. So I hmm. said the very civilized thing. I said, "I'm sorry." She said, "You're telling me you're sorry when I dropped the money." She said, "You must be married." <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, happy life is the is the goal, isn't it? <laughs> so, what about regulation, Rupmati? Mm. I mean, yeah. you know, we have different governments are going to have different views and and different officials and representatives and so forth that might regulate this differently. In the United States, we don't even understand these tech companies now. We don't have a clue. We have not regulated them. They have done terrible things to the First Amendment mm. and so forth. And, but we have not regulated. We have not given them any guidelines on okay. when they're damaging the country and when they're not. Um, how can we possibly regulate uh, chat GBT? It, it sounds like we're not even close to that. And if not we don't regulate them, what happens? The corporate laws, the technological laws, you know, like the pharma, pharmaceutical companies, we don't have clauses for vaccines. They cannot be held accountable for the uh, side effects of the vaccine. Same goes with technology. We can't hold them accountable. So uh, uh, if something goes wrong, uh, I mean, uh, we can complain, but we can't uh, hold them accountable. That uh, that they are responsible for the damage caused. That clause is not there effectively in any government in the world. What about so the United that, Nations, Rupmati? I always ask you about the United Nations. Yeah. Is is this something the United Nations could be effective at regulating? I hope so. Some one. Uh, I think it's it's a neutral area that they can work on and get something. Uh, you know, we have a, a section known as Global Compact. Uh, where they uh, work uh, about these issues, which are, uh, you know, uh, they need global understanding. Uh, technology can be part of that, but I hope they work on better things like Ukraine before they work on Chat GPT. <laughs> yes, who knows? Maybe there's a connection. Maybe somebody at the United Nations uh, could uh, say, "How do we stop the Russians?" Give us an answer. Tell me what we must do. I mean, Jay, it's playing all over, isn't it? We don't want uh, uh, conferences later on in life saying that we should have done this. We want action right now. So use all the technology that you have to stop the war. That That is the message that has to be, uh, you know, repeated every day. It's just become a part of the news and uh, people forget. It's a sad part of uh, this, that news, uh, you get it to your uh, tablet to your mobile to your laptop, but you ignore it. But there's a full fledged war going on. Yes, and and so we all have to see the possibilities and the advantages. Mm. So my my question to you is uh, recognizing this, listening to this show and other shows that we at Think Tech will do to try to um, understand, and and, uh, okay. and and that uh, Indian show I mentioned, which I was very impressed with it. The global debate. Well, you can find it on YouTube. Yeah. You can find everything on YouTube. Um, I True. suppose you <laughs> can ask GPT, Chat GPT, about the global debate, and it will tell you everything you want to know and more about the global debate. Mm -hmm. But well, given the fact that we are somewhat aware, okay, and we've looked at this, we've studied it, we've talked to people about it, we've used it, we've tried it, we've asked it questions and seen the answers, we understand the power of it, okay? <clears throat> And we are in a little group. It, it, there's a disparity between us and people in countries that don't have broadband. So right. what do we do? What do we do individually and as a group in our companies with our elected representatives? What do we do um, to use this and not abuse this? Um, boils down to personal choice and personal use, Jay. Uh, how do you use this? I mean, it's going to be very helpful that uh, um, and uh, safe because uh, the impersonal uh, nature of this artificial intelligence makes sure that you interact on a neutral platform. You don't have somebody who has a bias against you. 
So if somebody doesn't know how to uh, interact or how to uh, get a um, feedback and expects a impartial uh, assessment, it can go to this chat box. If I want to understand some issue without any prejudice, I can ask the chat box for uh, two different views or what are, you know, I can program it to suit my direction. Uh, so that's the way to go, Jay. I mean, using this technology to suit our needs is the main thing. But I'm still saying because this chat box is still not connected to the internet. The moment it gets connected to the internet, it will have up-to-date information. It will have a, a vast array of information which was not there till now. When we tell it to write a poem about you in, uh, as Shakespeare would have written it, uh, he, it will have access to more data, more uh, you know, uh, perspectives. So that becomes fruitful for us. But how do we uh, bring it on to, like, uh, I mean, for me, uh, technology does not have to displace the human uh, usefulness. That is the value of technology that I feel should be limited to just that, that human usefulness should not go. I always thought you were a Renaissance woman. Huh? Uh, <laughs> what, now, what about this, Rubani? You know, uh, hearing you explain these things makes me think of China. It makes me think of the social score system in China. Mm. You know, if you're the kind of person who jaywalks, not to use my name in vain, but if you're the person who jaywalks or violates the rules or cheats in some way, your social score is really low. And for that reason, you can't get on the bullet train. Um, you, you know, you're not going to be considered for this job or that job. Your life is, is limited because your social score is low. Now, some people say that's not fair. And it's an imperfect way of rating people and giving them benefits in the society. But that's what happens in China. That's the way it works. Okay, suppose I said to you, Rumati, that if you are a person with a good, and I'll call it social score, although that may not be the best term, um, then you can have access to chat GBT. And mm -hmm. if you have abused chat GBT, if you have done things in the community that are not mm, community oriented that are not Worthy, yeah. benefit of all people, you know, altruistic things. Uh, if your social score is low, you don't get a chance to use chat GBT. It's a special thing. It's like driving a car. It's a privilege uh, granted yes. by the licensing organization, whatever it is. And it's not a matter of right. Um, you know, this, this has a certain appeal, doesn't it? True, Jay, this carrot and stick uh, policy that we have, we can use uh, it's uh, social media in China was is is usually mon uh, usually monitored. So many um, websites are blocked. So like in India also, apps like TikTok and when we had an argument, we blocked um, applications which were Chinese. So this kind of technological warfare keeps on going on. When Russia attacks Ukraine, they shut down the internet. So. <laughs> You have uh, technological barriers that are put in. To, uh, but personal barriers, to what extent you can put in? We have VPNs going on. Uh, we have a social media which can be misused to a tremendous uh, level, J. The harassment that goes on on um, social media accounts. The, uh, there is, when you are alone with social media, there is no, only your personal self discipline. That is your barrier. That is exactly what we have in technology. Nobody will tell you not to use this unless it's your personal self-discipline or monetary uh, barriers that you are going to charge for the chat box. So that can be a delimiting factor. Yeah, so my... If you really useful, then you buy it and you use it. Well, that's if the operative free, word. Buy it. Buy it. Because what I've seen is that uh, OpenAI uh, is free now. It's a trial. Um, but when it goes connected to the internet, uh, it's going to be a different pro different situation. And there was something about a monthly cost of belonging, of using, of having the right to use. 
of 40 bucks or something close to that. Uh, mm -hmm. And that means 500 bucks a year um, I, you know, to, to do that. And, and, you, and you can see that if um, that comes to pass, uh, A, there's going to be much more powerful programs because it has to justify that cost. And true, B, um, probably the price will go up from $40 to who knows what, depending on who yeah. you are and what you need from it. So my question, my last question, Rupmati, is would you spend the $40 right now? And uh, how much would you pay to have this e enormous leverage in your life? I would keep my $40 and use the free version till it's available. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we have to stay in touch. And maybe your view will change when we see the technology change. Thank you so much, Rupmati. Rupmati Kandakar. Uh, joining us from New York and talking about the you know, the global impact of ChatGBT. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jay. Always, always a pleasure. The same. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.